Brazil's new teenage sensation, Endrick, struck late on to condemn England to defeat in a friendly at Wembley. Endrick is regarded as the new sensation of Brazilian football and he rewrote Wembley history with his winning goal, becoming the youngest male goal scorer for club or country at the stadium at just 17 years and 246 days old. South American football expert Tim Vickery said he has the talent to be a superstar. Special, special talent. He's one of those where, you know, like the really, really greats, it's looked like time is operating slower for them than it is for everyone else. You know, for everyone else, things are happening so quickly. Mm. Now, th- there are finishes. I mean, he, he, he had, a, had a chance to make it two there in stoppage time. But there are finishes that he does when it's just like he's passing the ball into the back of the net. He, he's, 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 he's so quick and he's mm. calm uh, and he's really, really talented. And he, he's, uh, for, for someone of his age, I, th- this fact that he comes off and talks about Bobby Charlton, he is being well assessed off the field and he's listening and he's learning. What we found out like, and last year, he, he was the key player when his side, he's 17, he's the key player when his side, uh, Palmeiras, won the Brazilian championships. And what we found out, one of the opposing centre-backs says, you know what he does during the game? He sings away to himself. You know, and, and I asked him about this a couple of months ago. I said, "What?" He wouldn't tell me the repertoire, but he says that it's something that he does just to keep himself calm, relaxed, and and, and in the zone. <laughs> yeah, seventeen years old, and wow, did he enjoy scoring that goal? He was celebrating for the good two minutes that VAR was trying to check if there was yeah. any issues with it. And uh, brilliant, their first ever goal for Brazil, and as we said, there a Wembley history maker as well. And he was linked with Chelsea, but his club future is now with Real Madrid, who he's going to be joining in the summer. And Cass, as we see, we know Real Madrid already have Vinicius Junior, Rodrigo, Bellingham. Mm. Mbappe and Endrick to join now as well. The Sun are reporting that Real are also interested in Trent Alexander-Arnold, who I think has a, a little over a year left on his yeah. Liverpool contract. Are we seeing now the new Galacticos and perhaps a, a new dominance <laughs> of Real Madrid to come? I remember reading a, a couple, well, probably two two years ago that Real Madrid are going to get away from the Galacticos. And, <laughs> uh, yeah, for how long? Yeah, um, thinking, like laughing. It. They want to buy the best. Yeah. They just do. You know, I, I've said for a while Trent is going to be moving away and it will be Barca or Real and no other club um, because he'll be adored in Spain the way he plays and Real Madrid do like to play and Barcelona both of them will want you know you can just look at the past and the history of these clubs of Cafu and you know Al- Alves and, and, and many others that are just flair players that excel mm. I mean it's, I, I love seeing Brazilians that are just very special um, because that's in their DNA to have a player that is. I remember when I first saw Ronaldo for the first time. The, I don't say the big Ronaldo because the, the original, the OG, yeah. yeah. And he was just phenomenal. I mean, if you ever had the pleasure to watch him as a seventeen-year-old before he got injured, he was frightening, mm. quick like no other, strong, and just gave him the ball, and he could ghost past players, um, and. I always feel like Brazil have to produce one of them. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's a Zico, whether it's a Pele, you know, they're these type of tremendous players that they have. Um, without that, Brazil are never the same nation. That's why there's a lot of mystique about Brazil all the time. Mm, well, as we're hearing there from Tim Vickery, who is based out in South America, he knows he's obviously seen a lot more of yeah. Hendrick and, and was telling us there he's a special talent. Well, you know, you know, Maradona played in Ireland just before the England game when he first came over and no one, well, the people knew about him, but he played in Ireland first. What do you mean played in Ireland? Played in Ireland in a, in a game in against a game. Ireland. Right, 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 you yes, know, sorry. You know, Maradona came over and played for Argentina in Ireland, in Dublin, mm-hmm. at Lansdowne Road, mm-hmm. and then not so many weeks later, then played at Wembley when <laughs> the, the world was at his feet because yeah. that night he was a complete... But he played in Ireland not long before. Yeah, you see? You know, um, so the Irish public got the first view of that Maradona. <laughs> So they knew what was to come, basically, is what you're suggesting. Um, We mentioned, obviously, Trent Alexander-Arnold in Liverpool contract running out. Uh, Liverpool hosted a Legends match yesterday between uh, a Liverpool 11 and and an Ajax Legends 11 as well, um, battling it out at Anfield. It was Liverpool who came from 2-0 down to win 4-2. And the lovely moment in this is the fact that the former England manager, Sven Joran Eriksson, fulfilled his lifelong dream as he took the hot seat uh, as the Liverpool manager for this game. It's like a dream and uh, I could never dreamt about that. But when I was manager, I always dreamt about Liverpool. 
but that never happened. It was close once, it was some discussion once, but now <laughs> it happens. And uh, when, I, when I asked, I thought it was a joke, but uh, they contacted me via my son, Johan. So I said, of course, I will come to that. And then it's a charity, which makes it even more lovely. A very special moment for Sven Juran Eriksson Kass, who mm. sadly in January disclosed that he is um, or has terminal cancer. Uh, and this was something, as I say, he mentioned in January and, and since then has talked about his, his love for Liverpool. Yeah. He's a fan. His father was a fan. And it was one of his, I mean, he obviously has a distinguished managerial career, but was one of those things he never got to do to be the manager of Liverpool, the club, as I mentioned, that he supported. So for Liverpool to have given him this opportunity, mm. just a lovely, touching moment. And, and we talk about it all the time in the sense that every now and then football just does the right thing and this was one of those. Oh, absolutely. Brilliant. Sentiment of everybody involved is just superb and raising great money yeah. for a, a big cause. Um, and Sven's dream, and look, he's in the final year of his life, which is what quite well documented. Mm. And he's doing things that he's just want to fulfil and that is to be the manager of Liverpool for one day and listening to you'll never walk alone and yeah. it just you know it's it's a lovely story um and a manager that done really well with england and has always conducted himself regards his his personality is always he always seems so scandinavian to me i mean that sounds like he is scandinavian but you know when someone's so stereotyped <laughs> scandinavian right okay. that he's very calm he never you know right. he, he, he just everything about him he never I, I can't imagine him losing his rag and, and in football, there are times in the dress room you lose it because mm. it's just the atmosphere, mm. you know. But I can't never imagine that with Sven. You no, know? I suppose I can see what you mean. I, I get what you're saying. Well, about awesome Wenger. Yeah, he. You can't imagine, and 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 it's been well documented again that he never lost his rag, and he always leave it till Monday morning. He'd get angry, but he would wait till Monday morning. Not the hairdryer treatment. The, no, okay. and, and look, everyone has different ways of doing yeah, of things. Course. So of you know, Fergie had his way. Brian Clough had his way, um, but yeah, it's uh, it was a great day for football. Oh, it was lovely and, and just the perfect thing for Liverpool to have done to have got him involved. Um, I mean, I'm sure you've played in similar sort of Legends games. Yeah, what yeah. What are they like? Are they, are they Good. Can they be feisty? Oh, they can do a little bit, but yeah, you want to make it competitive, but yeah, yeah they're great fun. And normally it's for raising money, so everybody's upbeat about, you know, coming and I'm very relaxed. You know, I'm laughing because I'm seeing John Barnes, Aldridge, Rush, and, you know, obviously I, know. I played with John, and John's is fun. John, John's great <laughs> fun. He'd be, he'd be having a real great banter with uh, Sven on the sidelines, without doubt. And, yeah, it's just great. It's it's just, just a great, uh, just not much you can say, really. It's just a lovely story. Yes, I played in games like that, mm. and... You look forward to meeting a lot of people you had associations with in football and then you play the game and then there's... It's nothing's that serious now. Mm, of course. You know, the score's irrelevant. 4-2, Liverpool coming back from... You know, I, I had my testimonial with Steve Staunton and I shared it. We played Liverpool. It was my dream. I scored oh. two against Liverpool. Oh, uh, you know, it, nice. that was my, in my testimonial. Um, at the end of my career and uh, it was a great day uh, obviously in the Aviva now but Lansdowne Road it's a great day there was 43,000 there brilliant I, I remember it like yesterday you know, that experience and especially Stan managed to get it over the line Steve Staunton because mm, he was a Liverpool mm, player Yeah. Um, and we donated a lot of money as well to charity so it was a great day yeah certainly so